Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of my Bluetooth in Action series. In the previous episode, we had a closer look at the hardware and the default program that came on the evaluation kit. In this episode, we'll be looking at how to program the BGM111 module, or more precisely, we'll be looking at the different ways to program it. In order to understand the different ways of using the module, first we need to look at how Bluetooth modules used to be connected. This might be a flashback for some, or a history lesson for others. Bluetooth modules were integrated modules containing a small microcontroller, but you never knew exactly what it was, because you didn't have access to it. When powered, it would automatically initiate a startup sequence, read some parameters from Flash, and open up a serial port, mostly UR to SPI. From there, your hardware application would talk to the module using serial, sending instructions and receiving responses. Once your application had configured the Bluetooth module as needed, the module would then enter a specific mode, where instead of communicating instructions, you would communicate raw data to be sent on the Bluetooth link, and you would receive data from that link. To be honest, that actually worked pretty well. It was a problem to develop for, though. Most of these adapters used the old-style AT commands, and you had to write your own API. It wasn't particularly difficult, it just required string manipulation knowledge. And time. The problem often came with what is known as command and data mode. When in command mode, the adapter accepted instructions and responded to those instructions. Like, tell me how many adapters are visible. And the device would respond, here you go. Data mode was simple. Each byte received on the UART was broadcast to connected devices, and vice versa. One of the most frequent problems encountered was when switching between these two modes. If something went wrong, and if you didn't check, then the next time you issued an AT command, instead of being processed by the adapter, the string would be broadcast to all connected devices, who probably had no idea what you were talking about. There was another problem to this, end-of-life management. Manufacturers often brought out new models as they added features, and if your product had a lifetime of 10 years, you would almost certainly need to use, and support, several Bluetooth adapters. There would also be a pretty good chance that their AT commands wouldn't be identical, that you would have to change a few things along the way. After a few years, your code would probably look something like this. If device equals this, then do this. Else if device equals this, do this. Else if device equals yet another device, then do yet again something else. Else printf, whoops, we haven't finished the API yet. And what about clients that wanted a specific firmware version for whatever reason, but who need new hardware? Don't laugh, I've been there. Believe me, it isn't pleasant. Luckily, that's all over. Now your application doesn't need to configure anything. The module itself can embark enough intelligence to take care of all the fine details, and your application can receive analyzed and treated data, concentrating on what it does best. In some cases, the Bluetooth module can replace entire applications. So, let's have a look at how we can use the module. Programming method number one, BGAPI. The BGAPI protocol was designed to act as a communication method between an application and an external adapter. And while this isn't exactly programming the module, it is worth mentioning. When Bluetooth modules were external, BGAPI was a way to talk with the module. The API was clearly laid out and could be used to create your own libraries. It had two major advantages. Firstly, you could use the programming language you wanted. If for some reason you didn't want to use C, you could use something else. Since the API was always the same, you wouldn't be writing a library for a device, but for a family, which brings us to the second point, compatibility. If your current device was end of life, then you would have to change modules. If the module used the same API, and of course had the same functionality, then you could simply swap the module for another one, and not change a single line of code. So, that might be interesting, but since the BGM111 module has a microcontroller and Bluetooth integrated, why would anybody need the BGAPI? Well, for the second reason, compatibility. If your application already uses BGAPI, you can connect the device and use the functionalities offered by this module. That doesn't mean that compatibility is guaranteed. If your original application uses Bluetooth 2.1 with EDR, you won't be able to use it with a single mode Bluetooth smart device. If, on the other hand, your application is a Bluetooth beacon and records the Bluetooth addresses of modules that are close by, then you probably don't need to change anything. There is another reason why you would want to use BGAPI. My desktop computer is where I record videos, where I do most of my development. Put simply, it's where I work from the most. I love having three screens. I also have two laptops. One is a powerful i7, but it isn't as comfortable as a desktop. The other is a tiny ultrabook that I only use for writing. It has an 11-inch screen, non-upgradable memory, but even so it's a joy to use. I can't use it to create this series. 
The laptops do, however, have a huge advantage. They both have Bluetooth 4.0 modules. My desktop also has integrated Bluetooth, but it only has Bluetooth 2.1. I can't actually talk to these modules directly, so I have to have a laptop close by. It would be so much easier to have Bluetooth 4.0 directly on my desktop. I could just go and buy an adapter, but where's the fun in that? So sooner or later, I'll be connecting a BGM111 module via BGAPI to my desktop, and using that to talk with the other modules. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And since I don't want to do systems programming, I'll use an existing Python library, and have something up and running in no time. Programming method number 2, BGLib. Since the BGM111 is based on a microcontroller, you would expect to be able to program it using C, just like you can with the entire EFM32 range. This is where BGLib comes in. It is an ANSI C implementation that allows you to access all the Bluetooth functionality, while giving you complete control of the microcontroller. Historically, BGLib was designed for external processors and microcontrollers, since at the time, the module would have been external. So it used BGAPI. Today, BGLib still exists, but this time it exists inside the microcontroller, and as surprising as it sounds, it still uses BGAPI. Once again, compatibility is key. There is a system that works exceptionally well, so why not keep using it? BGLib has one major advantage. By using a library written in NCC, you can create an application in C that has access to every part of your microcontroller or microprocessor, from simple things like activating GPIO all the way to FPU commands, and even routines and assembly, while using an optimized library for Bluetooth functions. The best of both worlds. The BGM111 is no exception to the BGLib philosophy. Instead of BGLib being integrated into an external processor, it can be used directly on the BGM111 module itself. It still uses BGLib, so you get control of your Bluetooth radio using simple C commands, but you also have complete control over everything inside the microcontroller, and the Cortex M4 with FPU has a lot to offer. Programming method number 3, BGScript. If you want to use the BGM111 as a standalone device, then you can't use BGAPI, and if you want a C developer, or if you are frightened by all the low-level development that goes with Cortex M programming, BGScript might just be what you are looking for. Let's face it. C programming can be a bit daunting sometimes. Simplicity Studio is aptly named, but even so, some people don't want all the fuss that comes with C. You might have an excellent idea for a future IoT killer application, but if you don't know C, you'll spend more time debugging than developing, and by the time you get your project out, somebody might have beaten you to it. Or you might be a seasoned embedded C developer, but you just want to prototype an idea quickly to see how it reacts. Scripting to the rescue. BGScript is exactly as the name suggests. A scripting language. It takes away all the hassle of startup code, memory allocation, interrupt handlers, and so on, and lets you concentrate on functionality. It is event-driven, that is to say that while the environment does nothing, the script does nothing. It requires specific actions to process data, and those actions can be devices connecting and disconnecting, receiving data wirelessly, or GPIO interrupts, to name but a few. By using a simple language, you can have an application up within under an hour. The script has simple instructions that can be used to make complex applications. If you are familiar with scripting languages like Python, you'll be comfortable using BGScript. If you aren't familiar with scripting languages, don't worry, it will be easy to pick up. Well, that's it for episode 2 of my Bluetooth in Action series. I hope you enjoyed it. This was just a short episode to talk about the different programming methods, but in the next episode, we'll be looking at the BGScript language and starting our first application. I'll be showing you what you need and how to get started with a new application. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.